Good morning, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And I, gosh, guys, I know I've been promising to get to this here on Daniel for quite some time. And uh, yeah, I got some crazy uh, image here from Forbes there, a guy writing an article about Planet X up here. There's a reason for that. And uh, we're going to get into that here in just a minute because I do believe that Daniel, his prophecy, does have somewhat to do uh, with this infamous planet. Uh, you know, I was I was really amazed. I was actually, as I was doing a little bit of research on this, the articles out there where they say there's no evidence, no historical evidence or anything that this planet has ever come across our path before. Hmm. I'm like, where, what, what rock have the people had their head buried under to say something like that, right? I mean, that, that can't be anything further from the truth. There are scores of documentation uh, that speaks of this passing of this planet in vivid detail, in fact, including your own Bible. Believe it or not, yeah, your own Bible speaks of that as well. Uh, I think we did that not too long ago. What was I think in the book of Joel? Uh, we can see that. And... Uh, there are other documents, although they're not biblical, I don't recommend them as biblical, but you have Colburn that gives very de vivid detail of the passing of this planet during the time of the Exodus event. Uh, you have um, the, well, you guys wouldn't get to know about it, but it is actually written also in the um, Mayan documents that are classified. Uh, it is written in the Kenyan documents that are not made public, uh, readily available to the public as well. So, uh, and I've had uh, the ability to know more about both of those documents already. So, yeah, it is there. And uh, maybe for a good reason, they don't want you to know more about it. But we're going to get into these things. Uh, and we're going to be looking at Daniel's prophecy, especially the latter part of the feat itself. The... Uh, the, the toes that are mi uh, mixed with iron and clay. We're going to be uh, speaking about that. We're going to also look at Malachi's prophecy. I really believe Malachi also is prophesying of the same event to happen again. Now, in the King James, it'll be chapter 4, not chapter 3, verse 19. But behold, the day come burns as, as a furnace, and all the proud, all that do the work wickedness shall be stubble, and they... And that day that cometh shall set them ablaze, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. <laughs> My gosh, what a, what, a, what a day, right? Revelation, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth as a fig tree cast her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind, right? We see there in verse 12 that when he opened the sixth seal, lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair. The moon became as blood. We get in, down to verse 14, and the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. Every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Sounds like a sounds like a Planet X event to me, especially if you've ever read the Colbrand uh, documentation of it. Um, and again, I cannot stress enough. I do not say Colbrand is a Bible, as some call it, uh, but the historicity of what's documented about this thing is very fascinating. And so and for that purpose, I only uh, cite that for you. Uh, we have to Matthew, Jesus speaking about it. Immediately, chapter 24, verse 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. The stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then it shall appear the son of the sign of the Son of Man. Uh, so we constantly see different places, no matter where you look at here. Uh, in fact, Jesus goes back, even compares it to the days of Noah, which was another time of that passing of the planet. Not just the fact, of course, the the time of him referencing that also lines up with Daniel's prophecy, chapter two. So. Let's kind of look at some of these things. I want to kind of share with you some thoughts that I have here, and maybe it'll be a blessing to you. Uh, we certainly hope it will be. Uh, before we actually get into that, let me just, uh, for those of you that would like to support the broadcast that we do here, um, IsraeliNewsLive.org, our website. 
and you can help support this work via either online which is the easiest way right there you just click on the link there it'll take you right it'll say PayPal but it doesn't matter what kind of credit card you want to use you're able to donate there um, or you can donate by mail in fact I'm fixing to send out letters once again uh, they'll be going out Monday to thank people that are supporting the work we do here if you have not got a letter from us in a while uh, hopefully I'll catch you this time around here uh, so I'm trying to get caught up on writing people back and saying thank you uh, there is by the way and I cannot say publicly why um, there is an extreme urgent need here financially uh, and I, I, I wished I could say I will be able to say in the near future but as of right now uh, we've been advised that we cannot say anything publicly as of yet but the need is certainly great and uh, and so your help uh, and however God lays upon your heart will be greatly greatly appreciated and I think in the near future when we can speak about these things you'll you'll definitely understand why the need is there uh, I can't even say what the purpose is for because it would uh, it would kind of reveal things that there are there are those that they don't want knowing as of yet. I, gosh, I wish I, I wish I could say more. I really just can't as of yet. But just God knows, and and He can lay it upon your heart. And I think many of you already know. You know the circumstances. Uh, even though we've not been able to talk about things that have happened to this family here, uh, but this family has been heavily um, targeted. Maybe that's a good way to put it there. And as a result, uh, it has had very catastrophic consequences in this family. And so there are multiple needs uh, from different directions. Uh, that we are undergoing that has put a tremendous stress here on the family so we certainly thank you for your kindness but anyway thank you and God bless you let's get right into this message here uh, Daniel chapter 2 verse 31 thou king sawest and behold a great image this image which was mighty and whose brightness was surpassing stood before you and the appearance thereof was terrible as for that image, its head was of fine gold, its breast and its arms of silver, its belly and its thighs of brass, its legs of iron, its feet part of iron and part of clay. You saw till that stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon its feet that were of iron and clay and broke them to pieces. Then was the iron, the brass, the silver, the golden gold broken in pieces together and became like chaff of the summer threshing floor. And the wind carried them away so that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. This is the dream. And we will tell the interpretation there before the king. Thou, O king of kings, unto whom the God of heaven hath given the kingdom and power and strength and glory, Whosoever the children of men, the beast of the field, and the fowls of the heaven dwell hath, he hath given them into your hand, and has made you to rule over them all. You are the head of gold. And after you shall arise another kingdom inferior to you, another third kingdom of brass, which shall bow rule over all the earth. The fourth kingdom shall be as strong as iron, for as much as iron breaks in pieces and beats down all things, and as iron that crushes all these, shall it break in pieces and crush. And whereas you saw the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, it shall be a divided kingdom. But there shall be in, the, be in it of the firmness of iron. For as much as you saw the iron mixed with miry clay, and the toes and the feet were part of iron, part of clay, so part of the kingdom shall be strong, and part, part of it thereof will be broken. And whereas you saw the iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves by the seed of men. They shall not cleave one to another, even as iron doth not mingle with clay. 
Now I'm going to stop right there. And I want you to keep in mind one thing specifically here. That stone that is cut out without hands and destroys this image, we know represents the Messiah, Christ. So I don't see any greater thing or, or, or greater good when it comes to Nebuchadnezzar than I do with the rest of the image. Still an image. And it still had to be destroyed. But I want I want you to see now he says that Nebuchadnezzar is that that head was a fine gold. Uh, all right, let's take a look at something here. Revelation, I believe. Let's see if I can find the right place for this. Revelation. Um, oh goodness. I am actually looking. Here we go, right here. Revelation chapter 9. And in those days shall men seek death. Well, let me back up just a little bit here. The fifth angel sounded. And we're talking about now the, the trumpets. And I saw a star fall from heaven into the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit. And there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locust upon the earth. Upon them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but they should be tormented five months, and torment was the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. In those days shall men seek death, shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. Now watch this here. The shapes of the locusts were likened to horses prepared unto battle. And on their heads were, as it were, crowns like gold. And their faces as the faces of men. They had their hair of women, and the teeth were as the teeth of lions. The breastplates, as it were, breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. You remember, and I don't know if I have that scripture up, so let me just pull this up real quick, like horsemen. Let me see here. I just shared this with you guys the other day. Yeah, here we go right here. Joel 2.4. All right. The appearance of them is the appearance of horses, and a horseman, so shall they run. Let me back up here. Joel chapter 2, verse 3. A fire devours before them, and behind them a flame burns the land as, as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, nothing shall escape them. Well, let's just pull this scripture up completely. That, that would be better. Joel 2. It, it, it appears to me... What we're looking at, okay, here we go. It's actually in verse 4 in the Hebrew Bible here. Let me start with verse 2. A day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, as blackness spreads upon the mountains, a great people and a mighty there hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after them, even to the years of many generations. Notice that timing right there. Okay, many generation, right there, vedor, vedor. That's what that means in Hebrew. And they come, but they don't come very often. A fire devours before them, and behind them a flame blazeth. The land is the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness, yea, nothing escapes them. Sounds just like what happened when Moses went down to deliver the children of Israel. If you read the, whether, whether you read it in the, in, in the biblical account, when Moses goes, he strikes uh, the river, the, the Nile, the Nile turns to blood. And, and what's interesting, the Colbrin actually, even though they don't call the name of Moses, it actually states in there that, uh, that it was a priest that was in Pharaoh's house that led them, that led the children of Israel. It, it speaks about how that they were, they knew 
They prophesied of the things that were going to happen to Egypt before they happened. You know, so in that case, I give will give some credit for accuracy there. But uh, biblically, we know Moses prophesies of you know what he tells Pharaoh what's going to happen. You know, each time there's going to be hail, there's going to be this, there's going to be fire, there's going to be boils, there's going to be frogs. Uh, you name it, he speaks about it. And so we look here and we see an event coming and it says that this happens, but, and it destroys the land before and afterwards. And there, there's not a mighty like this ever, you know, but for, for many generations. Now, what we don't find out, what we don't read about, and I've not seen this other than I know in documents that are classified, it does speak about this, that there, that this whole planet X thing here is a real planet and it's inhabited by a some form of reptilian species. Now that though lines up with Daniel. Now, now think about this. This one reason why I want to throw this in as a conjecture, right? The the toes of this, its legs of iron, its feet part of iron and part of clay. And then it goes on to say they mingled the seed. They, they, they saw that the iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves by the seed of men. They're literally mingling the DNA or, or, or whether they're doing it uh, through sexual or like, well, sexual is what I would think for the simple reason is, is what did, what does Jesus say over here in Matthew? He reminds you, you know, he tells you up here, it's going to come the day. It's going to be, the sun is going to be dark and the moon shall not give her light. The stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Now the powers of heaven that are going to be shaken are those archons, the fallen angels. They're the ones that are being shaken by all this. And he shall send, notice this, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And, and I got to tell you something, friends. Those of you that know how to think deep, why are we reading this in the third person? Anybody that's ever read anything about Planet X knows that there's something about it when it gets near the earth, it creates a trumpet sound, massive trumpet sound. And they should gather, gather together the, his elect from the four winds. You know, now, now learn a parable of victory when his brand is yet tender, put it forth leaves. You know that summer is nigh. When you see these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. It's almost like there's a mercy for the true believer. But watch what he goes on then and says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Heaven and earth is going to pass away. Now, Granted, the heaven, when he speaks of heaven, doesn't necessarily speak of the solar system itself. It could be the atmospheres that are on this planet. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, not the angels of, of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For as the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Now, we also know that in Noah's day, it was an event believed to be like that of Planet X passing that caused that great deluge. And again, there are documents that do support the historicity of that including even in our own Bible, including the book of Jeremiah, uh, that some believe, and I think that's right here. Let me just take a look at this. Or no, that's not the one on Jeremiah. That's a different purpose for that there. Um, and I believe, in fact, when I was on with John on Revelation, or Tribulation Now on his radio broadcast, I'm going to have John on here too. He understands a lot about this Planet X information. But John actually speaks about, uh, I think he says Jeremiah chapter 4, right in there, something like that, he uses a word similar to that of destroyer, which is what a lot of documents call this thing. So, 
I'm looking at all this, but of course, the one thing, I, oh gosh, no, I almost forgot, I kind of got away from it for a minute though. So I wanted to also look at the Daniel's image, right? Now I was just sharing with you and we pulled it up out of Joel here. We hadn't got down to it uh, because we got into another thing. Sorry about that being sidetracked a little bit. Verse four, the appearance of them is the appearance of horses and as horsemen, so do they run. Now, the antecedent here are those mighty that are come, a great people, a mighty, there hath not been ever the like. Their appearance is like horses. Uh, and they, but they run like a horseman. In other words, they run with two feet. And let me just see if I can pull this up. You know, your reptilians are like, they, 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 they you know, they look like, um, and I'll just pull up images here so I can kind of share that with you. I've been told they had skin like a lizard. And, and this is by an individual that I know personally that's actually seen them because we, supposedly we have one in captivity. This image right here came to my mind a little bit when I heard about the description, mainly too because you got a little bit of, a, not this one here, there's another one, and I don't know where it's at, but there's more of like a goldish hue in the head of this creature there. But then I've been told their, their, their bodies are like Arnold Schwarzenegger, very muscular and close to nine feet in height, seven to nine feet, I think is what I've been told as far as their height. Uh, and that would be why you get the idea that the, the, the prophet Joel compares them to um, horses. Because take a nine foot creature that's a reptilian standing on his hind legs, very muscular. And of course, that's what a horse would look like. A horse being very muscular. Um, but what's interesting is in the book of Revelation we read, and shapes of the locusts were likened to horses prepared into battle. On their heads were, as it were, crowns like gold. That they're not crowns of gold there. It's like they were crowns of gold. All right. You go back to that image here. Let me take you up to that one I just first pulled up, right? Now, because of the weirdness of the shape of the head, and then if you have a goldish color in there, that might be why you get that type of description. And then we have, you have this Rabbi Tzedek who tells the people, he tells his own congregation, if you see a reptilian hand extending out, don't be afraid. These are those that have come to deliver us. Yeah. So, then we look at Daniel's image, and the image starts off with a head of gold. Now, he does say that Nebuchadnezzar is that head of gold. But does that is that because he represents the time of a reptilian kingdom when it's being, uh, when this is all going on? Because you've got to remember, all right, Daniel, they go down there into captivity, but let's, let's not forget, let's just look this up real quick. Ezra... All right, and this is why you got to understand how this all connects together. So let's take a look at Ezra right here, chapter 9, just as a reminder. Now, when the things were done, the princes drew near unto me, saying, The people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the peoples of the lands, doing according to their abominations, even of, even of the Canaanites, Hittites, Perzites, Jebusites, Ammonites, Moabites, Egyptians, and the Amorites. For they have taken of their daughters for themselves and, and for their sons, so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the peoples of the land. It's right there. Right there. There it is in the Hebrew language. Zarah HaKodesh, the holy seed. They mingled themselves. Literally, it says lehem, lehem ve le, levnechem, see? And to them, the sons, their sons, or our sons, you know, they, they've mingled their, they've mingled that seed together of the people of the lands. Anybody who knows anything about the Canaanites, Hittites, Perizzites, Jebusites, etc., they had mingled in with Nephilim bloodline. We know this. What is it? Book of Numbers, right? I believe if I remember right. Uh, let me just kind of 
we, we're going to we're going to stay really focused on this we can get this out just right here um, is it numbers 13 or where are we at where are we at no I'm actually in the wrong chapter I think see here we go right there now this is Joshua they're giving their report right how be it the people that dwell in the land are fierce and the cities are fortified very great moreover we saw the children of Anak not Enoch Anak there Amalek dwelleth in the land of the south and the Hittite and the Jebusite and the Amorite dwell in the mountains the Canaanite they dwell by the sea along the along the Jordan okay and Caleb stilled the people toward Moses and said, We should go up at once and possess it, for we are able to overcome it. But the man that went up with them said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they spread an evil report of the land, which they spied out of the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have passed to spy out is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the Hanaflim, right there, Hanaflim, the sons of Anak, who come of the Nathalim. Now there's a difference in the spelling. That's why I had it highlighted differently. Mean Hanaflim. There's no Yod right there, so you have an extra Yod right here. Why? Nephilim represents the children of the fallen angels. The Nephilim are the fallen angels themselves. So Enoch, his father, and it does list it in the scripture here, whose father was, he was actually a fallen angel. So we know that the Hittites and the Amorites come from the fallen angels, from the Nephilim bloodline. And that's what we have right here. They mingled that seed. And what did Daniel say they're going to do? They said they're going to mingle the seed again. That, that latter part of the image represent the latter part of the day there. Now, the iron, let's go back, his brightness surpasses to the, the appearance thereof was terrible. The head was of fine gold, the breast and its arms of silver, its belly and its thighs of brass. Think of that one. Uh, you might say, Brother Steve, what do you mean? Think of that one. What does brass got to do with anything, right? Remember what Moses had to do? He had to lift up the brass serpent in the wilderness. Israel had been complaining. They loathed the manna. They hated it. They even loathed the fish. Or no, so I'm sorry, they didn't loathe the fish. They wished they had the fish. You remember where Jesus makes that very interesting statement? Let me pull that up for you, all right? Now, when you read the account about them being bitten of serpents, the, the fish didn't come up at that exact spot, it's, but it's right there near there where they were talking about, oh, they remember the fish. Let me just, let's pull that up just so we can bring that out. They remembered, remember the fish, and I can't spell is what the problem is. The melons, there we go, numbers 11, 5. Yeah, we remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely, the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic, right? <laughs> but now our soul is dried away, there is nothing at all beside this manna before our eyes. Okay, remember all that? They're, they're all upset. They're bent out of shape over that. And now they, they, they loathe the manna. They hated it, right? So, uh, and then we have the case of the brass serpent. Now, that, like I said, quite a few chapters later, and Moses made a serpent of brass and put it on the iron pole, and it came to pass if a serpent, but let's, let's back up just a little bit. See, why, why does this have to be done? And they journey from the mount. Uh, with the Red Sea to the compass the land of Edom and the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way and the people spoke against God and against Moses wherefore have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness for there is no bread neither is there any water our soul loatheth this like bread 
And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Hmm. Now, the fascinating thing is, then Jesus comes, then, then this comes up with Jesus, you know. Um, Matthew 7, 9. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be open. Or what man is there of you whom if his son ask a bread, will, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your, heaven, shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask of him? You see, when you're, when you're dealing back with Moses, you're under the law. The law has no mercy whatsoever. But with Christ, there's mercy. With Christ, he actually honored that request. And he multiplied the fish. I have a feeling that's one of the reasons why he multiplied fish. He knew what their forefathers did. But he displayed mercy and compassion. I still try to tell people, think deeply when you're reading these things. you got to really think deep. Because there is a lot hidden here that people are totally overlooking. So, getting back to it though, what happens though? That, that image, its belly is made of brass. And its thigh. That in itself ought to make you think as well, because why? Not only do you raise up, did Moses raise up the brass serpent in the wilderness, but you got to remember, what does the serpent do? Crawls on his belly. You could even take it back to the Garden of Eden. The serpent was cursed to go on his belly. So we got the head of gold. We get that description of Revelation that these horsemen they have like gold-like type heads. Every time you turn around, we got a reptilian kingdom somewhere in this. That's why I want you to think deeply. Okay? So, and then we get down to the iron and the feet, and they're mixed up with clay and iron. Let's see why I got, I forget some of the, okay, here's some other issues here I want to share with you. Now we're over here in the book of, uh, I believe it's Isaiah, chapter 45. Yahweh says here, I form the light, create darkness, I make peace, create evil. I am the Lord, or Yehovah, Yahweh, however you want to call that, that doeth all these things. Drop down ye heavens from above, let the skies pour down righteousness, let the earth open they may bring forth salvation let her cause righteousness to spring up together i the lord have created it woe unto him that striveth with his maker as a pot shred with the pot shirts of the earth shall the clay say to him that fashioned it why makest thou or thy work it hath no hands woe unto him that saith unto his father wherefore begettest you or to a woman why travailest thou? Thus saith the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, and his Maker, ask me of the things that are to come concerning my sons and concerning the work of my hands. Command you me. I even have made the earth and created man upon it. I even my hands have stretched out the heavens and all their host have I commanded. Now, the purpose I wanted to bring this out is the fact that we are the ones that are made of clay of this earth. Often, as we hear the expression made, we are imprisoned here. Well, I kind of think the body is that prison personally, but that's just me. And then Daniel says that iron and clay mixed together. Now, my wife brought out a beautiful analogy one time because of the technology, because of the, even the, the idea of well, you know, I can't really say a whole lot. We know that that mandate issue there, 
they really wanted to put a lot of that junk inside of the human body. Let's put it like that. What were they doing? They were altering. They are mingling the seed. They are manipulating the genetics of mankind with their alien agenda, their, their fallen angel, their demonic agenda. And so we find Daniel says they mingle the seed. And of course, it's part of potter's clay, part of iron. And the kingdom's divided as a result. How's it going to stand? Ezekiel. Excuse me, not Ezekiel. I think we're in Zechariah. Uh, yeah, Zechariah chapter 11, verse 12. And I said unto them, if you think good, give me my hire. If not, forbear. So they wait for my hire, 30 pieces of silver. And the Lord said unto me, cast it into the treasury, the goodly price that I was prized of them. And I took 30 pieces of silver and cast them into the treasury, into the house of the Lord. Now, it doesn't actually say quite that. Let me tell you what it says. Otobayat Yehovah. All right. He cast, he actually cast in Ve'a Sheliach. That's right over here, so you know where I'm reading from. Ve'a Sheliach Otobayat Yehovah. El Hayotzer. The Yotzer to the potter, all right, they're going to throw into his house, the house of Yahweh, that 30 pieces of silver. Do you realize what was happening right here when they weighed out the price of Christ? When Judas sold him, he actually was paying for the use of that body. Now, I find it fascinating because it actually says, <laughs> plainly says, you cast that out to him, the house of Jehovah. Because, granted, the scripture does say that, as we read just a moment ago here, Woe unto him that striveth with his maker, as a pot shred with pot sherds of the earth. Shall the clay say to him that fashioned it, Why makest thou or, the, or thy work? It hath no hands. Well, you know, see, Jesus, he didn't, just, he didn't just borrow a body. He paid for, he had the body paid for. And isn't it interesting that the, that the potter was in the temple? I told you, you're gonna, you'd think deep on some of these things here when you're looking at it, right? All right, now. So we kind of look at this. We look, we look back over here at Daniel. We see that there is that mingling of the seed. We know that that stone is going to be cut out without hands. It's going to destroy this image. Thank God for that. And that destruction seems to come when we look at things like Malachi 4, for example. Chapter 4 in, in the King James and the Hebrew Bible is still chapter 3. Uh, I think uh, this would be verse 1 and verse 19 would be verse 1 for you guys. For behold, the day cometh, it burns as a furnace, and all the proud and all that work wickedness shall be stubble, and the day that cometh shall set them ablaze. Saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall leave them neither root nor branch. That lets me know that those fallen angels, their root, which is Satan himself, ain't going to be left either. In the Egyptian documents, it actually speaks of that, that the archons will be in fear because their end is coming. So maybe this time around, it's not just the destruction of this planet, but maybe some of them devils, if not all of them, are going to get their heyday as well. But to you that fear my name, the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in its wings, or his wings either way, and you shall go forth as gamble as the calves of the stall. You know, there's a lot of question. Why is the word son used there? Vezivacha lechem iro eshmi shemesh sadik sadika. The son of righteousness. Don't they like to call Planet X 
a failed dwarf star or a second sun? The only thing I can see as far as the healing then, because notice it also speaks of the wings, and you know that, what are they called, Nibiru, the winged planet or something like that? And you shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I do make, saith the Lord of hosts. You would not believe what the historicity is behind the passing of this planet. Maybe, maybe one day I'll just read it to you guys. Uh, fascinating what's written there. But And, and when I say that, I, I say it with caution because I don't want people to start looking at other documents as some kind of biblical things. His, historic, historic information is the best way to look at that. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded to him in Horeb for all Israel, even the statutes and ordinances. Behold, I will send you, Elijah the prophet, before the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord. And we know that couldn't have been during the time of um, John the Baptist, unless, now I, I take that back, it could have been. We could have had that as well for the simple reason is, is we do know that the, the sun didn't shine. We had a lot of very similar incidences that happened during the time when Christ was crucified. But this great and dreadful day where you walk out on the soles of your feet or walk out on their ashes did not happen in the times of Jesus. And so the question does come, then why are we getting this Elijah now? I know that when Jesus quotes this and he says, truly Elijah shall first come and restore all things, you got to remember John the Baptist was dead when he says that. He said, he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the land with utter destruction. Now, Truly, John did turn the heart of the fathers to the children. But Jesus never gave him credit for turning the, to turning the heart of the children to their fathers. He only gives him credit for one half of that verse. So think about it. I don't know, what the, I don't know how to answer that. I've done a lot of videos about it. But uh, the more I look at scriptures, I kind of get a little bit more neutral in these things. Right? Um, This here is just some of the, this is some of the biblical account in the book of Psalms of the passing of what I would call Planet X at that time, Psalm 78. He sent among them swarms of flies which devoured them and frogs which destroyed them. Frogs destroyed people. He gave also their increase into the caterpillar and their labor into the locusts. He destroyed their vines with hail, with sycamore trees, with frost. Yeah, that's what I've been told too. There will come a massive freeze with this thing. He gave over their cattle also to the hail and their flocks to fiery bolts. He sent forth upon them fierceness of his anger, wrath and indignation and trouble and sending of messengers of evil. He leveled a path for his anger and spared not their soul from death, but gave their life over to pestilence. What is the messengers of evil? You ever wonder about that one? And by the way, it's Melachai Aim. You can also translate that as angels of evil. Yeah. He sent them angels, evil angels, archons. You want to talk about there now that you've got a reptilian type of thing going on? There you go. Think about it. Revelation chapter 6. And behold, when he had opened the sixth seal, lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth. The hair and moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casts her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. Every mountain and island moved out of their places, and the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, every bondman, every free man hid themselves in the dens and the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us, high Hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is coming. Who shall be able to stand?
this is this is nuts guys revelation chapter 7 and after these things i saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth holding the four winds of the earth and the wind should not blow on the earth nor of the sea nor of any other tree this is where we get the sealing hurt not the earth neither the sea nor the trees till we have sealed the servants of our god in their foreheads and as I read to you already, the shapes of the locusts were likened to horses who prepared and to battle. Their heads were as the, were crowns like gold. Their faces were as the faces of men. And they had hair as the hair of women, the teeth as the teeth of lions. The breastplates and the breastplates of iron and the sound of their wings. There's your iron again, just like in Daniel's prophecy. You got the head of gold. You got a breastplate of iron. I mean, I mean, what what are we about to face? Hmm. I don't. I know I put this one in here in Jeremiah, but I don't remember exactly what the purpose was at that time. So I'll skip that one for now. And Matthew twenty four, as I said already, we've already gone into this enough here. The days of Noah, we know that they ate and drank human flesh. We know that it was a mingling of the seed. And we know also that we, we, we have the information what caused that great flood, of course, as Jesus is already giving you that analogy here. The moon shall not give her light. The stars shall fall from heaven, etc. And by the way, they say when this planet passes, it turns the water to blood because like a blood-like look, not a physical blood, but because of the heavy iron in the planet, it will turn the waters like blood red. Totally undrinkable. And even the Colburn spoke of that as well. Um, you know, now our Kenan says it turned to blood. Maybe it actually turned to blood. I, you know, there, there, there's, you know, the question is, is, is that more analogy or is it something else? I'm not really sure. So um, we'll just have to see there. But anyway, we are looking at some very, very tragic times in the not so distant future. And I think Joel really prophesies that. I think we're seeing Daniel prophesy of this. Um, and I think that we need to have our lives prayed up. We need to be ready. We need to truly seek our Heavenly Father like never before. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, um, I can't encourage you enough to really go before Him with a sincere heart. Just, you know, when, when, when we hear the expression repent of your sins, you know, that is to turn away from those things that we've done wrong and to, you know, make things right. If you've hurt someone, you've done someone evil, go make that right. You know, we're in a late hour, friends, very late hour. So I can't encourage you enough. Get everything everything that you can if it's possible i mean there are some things i realize people get kind of tormented by those types of thoughts you know they did something wrong in life and they just they have no way to be able to make it right maybe the person passed away or something like that all right i understand that but if there's any way to make those things right make the things right if you if you've offended your neighbor or whatever go to them talk to them tell them you're sorry you got family members and stuff that are away that don't know Jesus. You know, that, you know, pray for them sincerely. You know, I wouldn't want my worst enemy to suffer in, a, in, in the regions of the lost, separated from our Heavenly Father. So I encourage you today. If you personally don't know who Jesus Christ is, listen, you don't have to have a preacher. You don't have to have, you don't have, you don't have to go down to a church to find him. That's a one-on-one -on -one thing between you and him. All you have to do is just cry out to him. Call upon his name. And let him lead you through. He'll lead you. He'll place in your heart. He'll, he'll burden you to that place to do what you need to do to bring you in line with Him, with His Word. And He's the only thing that matters. 
You don't have to keep laws. You don't have to. That's the whole thing. Like I said, Jesus came and showed mercy. Like I showed you the part about the serpent a minute ago. Jesus says a father would give good gifts to his son. And he did. He came and he showed them. He, I'll give you the fish. I'll show you the mercy. Sure, you might deserve the other way around, but I'll show you mercy. The law will keep you in bondage. And that's another thing too. If you're caught up in the law, you need to get free from that because that's where the false prophecy comes in. They're going to tell you you got to keep the law. And this is what will bring about redemption. <clears throat> they'll say that, you know, because they'll say, well, you know, God's going to redeem Israel. Jesus Christ is who did the redemption work. There is no other redemption work. He's not going to redeem them through the law. And if you're judged by the law, you'll have no mercy. You saw what happened to Israel in the wilderness journey, right? There was no mercy. I'm Stephen Benoon. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your uh, support of this broadcast. Again, we thank you. You can just go to our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org, either by mail, Danoon Institute, P.O. Box, 156 Sunbright, Tennessee, 37872, uh, or online. Either way, we thank you and God bless you.